Welcome back. This video is the continuation of the previous video about creating a 2D snake game. The plan for today is to add a snake and a randomly generated fruit and finish the game. Let's start with creating a snake struct. The struct will contain a one-dimensional array of rectangles. It will be no longer than 100 blocks long and we will default initialize all of them. We also need a direction variable and a length variable to track the current size of the snake. It will have the length of 5 blocks in the beginning. Next, we need a constructor. It will take x and y position and will initialize the snake. Then we need to add an update function to update the snake logic and a render function to draw the snake. We also need a grow function that will increase the size of the snake when it eats a fruit. Let's return to the render function. Even though the maximum size of the snake is 100 blocks, we are not going to draw all of them. We will display only the current length of the snake. Now go to the update function. The first thing we will do is move the tail of the snake. So how does it work? We start from the end of the tail and the last block of the snake's tail takes the position of the previous one and the previous one takes the position of the block before it and so on and so forth. Once we have moved the tail of the snake, we need to move the head by the block size in the direction where the snake is moving. Another thing we would like to do is to implement the code so that the snake stays inside the window and does not run away. If snake moves in the left direction, we would like to teleport the snake to the right boundary of our window and vice versa. The same applies to the top and to the bottom of our window. Alright, we're done with the snake. Let's connect everything together. Firstly, go to the game struct. Create and initialize a snake variable. Then inside process events function, let's handle user input. So if the player pressed up, we change the direction of the snake accordingly. Secondly, let's move on to the update function. What we need to do is to iterate through each block of the snake's tail and check whether the head of the snake has bumped into its tail. And if this is true, then it's game over. We also need to call the update function of the snake down below. Finally, we need to call the snake's render function down here and display the game over message if game is over. Compile and run. What you should get is a moving snake and if you bump into its tail, the game over message should appear. Alright, let's move on to the last part. We need to create a fruit struct. It will contain a rectangle variable which is the fruit itself, and a boolean variable to track if the fruit was eaten by the snake. To generate the fruit at random locations, we will need a uniform function. So let's import that function from the standard library. Now let's create a generate fruit function. It will initialize a rectangle at random locations. We also need to add an update function. If the fruit was eaten, we would like to generate a new fruit and set eaten to false. And finally, we need a render function to draw the fruit. If the fruit is eaten, there is nothing to draw, so we return from the function. Now we need to return to the game struct update function and check if the head of the snake has bumped into a fruit. If this is true, then we set fruit eaten to true and call snake grow function. And down below, we call the fruit update function as well. We also need to call fruit render function down here. Compile and run. And you should get a fully functional 2D snake game. When you eat a fruit, the snake grows by one block. And when the head of the snake bumps into its tail, the game over message should appear. That's it. Have a nice day.